Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Story Time with Friends. I actually forgot what episode number this is, but hey, 1.2 update is right around the corner, and I figured now's the perfect time to do a recap of Act Seven. But unlike my previous episodes, I am not going to go into a full breakdown of this act. Rather, I am going to split this act into five major topics, and I will discuss all the information pertaining to these five topics. This way, we are up to date with all the information and the incidents that transpired in this act, and we'll be ready for whatever the story is in the upcoming 1.2 update. The five main topics that we are going to cover in this episode will be the following. Without further ado, let's begin with topic number one, which is Abby, aka Kuros Paimon. I'm pretty sure all of you remember from the previous acts of this little devil who was always hungry and who always talked in between. Yes, that same little devil who saved us from the Thanodian in Act Number Six. Yes, that guy's name is Abby. I don't know why Kuro decided to go with that name Abby, but hey, it kind of fits. He's pretty cute, and she's pretty much of a chatterbox. I don't know. I don't know if the gender is a he or a she, but Abby sounds like a female name, so I'm just gonna go with she for now. Abby is a modified version of a tacit Discord, a very unique one at that. Abby can communicate, just like. any other regular human being and she also possesses very unique skills she does not know what her skills are because apparently she also suffers from a little bit of a memory problem just like us so she does not recall or remember all her abilities but i'm pretty sure some of those abilities will show up in the future but hey one ability that we for sure know she has is the ability to absorb tacit discords just like we use our terminal to absorb echoes abby can absorb tacit discords directly She can absorb really powerful ones too, but the trigger conditions for how she absorbs it is still unknown. We don't know when it happens or how it happens. After our interaction with the Thanodian in Act Number Six, Abby seems to have awoken completely. She's still missing her memories, but it seems like she can communicate with us freely. She can also come out of the tacit mark whenever she feels like, but doing so does consume a lot of energy so she does prefer to sleep and rest inside the tacit mark just like how nesuko does in the demon slayer anime oh also yeah she just loves to eat food like all the freaking time now that's a little bit of information about abby she doesn't have much more role in act 7 but she does interject in between and says her comments and then goes back to sleep that's what she does for the remainder of the act but now let's move on to the next topic Mount Firmament. We had yet another dream of Sentinel Jewel, but this time the Sentinel was leading us to a certain place. This place was icy cold, barren almost, and had a mountain which had a shape of a giant dragon. After asking around, we find that this place is called Mount Firmament. Coincidentally, Jinshi is headed there too to look for the missing Sentinel. After confirming our speculations with Sanwa. She suggests that we head out for the ferry and the wayfinder will meet us there. And this wayfinder is none other than Changli. Changli gives us a lot of information about Mount Firmament. Mount Firmament used to be just like any other place. A lot of people visited there. There was a city there called Hongzhen which was bustling with life. A lot of people, a lot of things to do, etc. But a long time ago This area was outrun with tacit discords. There were so many tacit discords swarming this place and attacking it. The Sentinel took matters into their own hands and froze time around this area to stop the attack of the tacit discord. But unfortunately, the Sentinel did not have the ability to restore the place back to its original state after freezing the time because the Sentinel had accidentally lost her ability to restore time eons ago. So because of that this place remains entirely locked in time and whoever enters this place will lose track of time on their body as well time flows at an accelerated rate outside compared to inside and whoever leaves will lose an equivalent amount of life span just like that Mount Firmament also holds a couple more secrets for one it is the home of Sentinel Jew Sentinel comes here to rest and recover whenever it needs to. It's also the birthplace of Jinshi, and Jinshi was appointed as the appointed resonator of Sentinel Jue at the same place. This place also holds a lot of secrets for us, Rover, 
but I will reveal that in topic number 5. That's when things get interesting. Now let's move to topic number 3, Chrono Sorter and the Court of Savant. While we were trying to find out where Jinshi was, we came across some interesting reports which showed information regarding experiments performed by the Court of Savant, a group of scientists who apparently a long time ago seemed to have worked alongside Jue to perform a lot of experiments. These experiments were regarding artificial resonance objects, objects man-made which were able to use or utilize a certain portion of the sentinel's energy to replicate a small portion of its power. It's just like how it sounds. This device is capable of using a certain portion of sentinel Jewess energy to control time in a small area. Adjust the flow, rewind, stop, forward, etc. But since these are man-made objects, they can only handle the Jewess power to a certain fraction. Sentinel Jew is a sentient being, all powerful. So it's understandable that a small man made object can only handle a certain, a tiny fraction of Jewish power before it completely gets destroyed. But there was also a second set of results which the scientists from the court of Savant obtained as a result of these experiments. It's the fact that during their experiments, they saw that these objects right at their breaking point were able to absorb a lot more energy and trigger a secondary effect rather than they would during normal operating conditions. But these devices shortly failed afterwards so they were able to deduct that a second awakening is a possible solution or a situation amongst resonators that during your overclocking period an overclocking period is when a resonator pushes their abilities too much to the point where they overclock and they get tired, too tired, pretty much. So this second awakening is triggered when a resonator absorbs a rec resonant or equivalent frequency of their skills into themselves during their overclocking period. It's a very tiny window, but during that window, if they're able to absorb something of a similar frequency, they're able to trigger a second awakening and enhance the abilities of their resonant skills. But do keep in mind, overclocking alone is considered to be very dangerous and most resonators who force themselves to do that either end up seriously hurt or killing themselves. So this whole concept of second awakening is in itself way more riskier than overclocking. And it should not be recommended or should not be done by anybody. This whole concept was hidden because it was stuck in Mount Firmament and nobody knew about it until we just found out about it right now. With all that information in mind, let's head on over to topic number 4, Jinshi vs Jue. We finally caught up with Jinshi and together we head on over to the place where Jue is imprisoned. Coincidentally, Jue is imprisoned in Moonglong Chamber, the same chamber that Jue usually rests in to recover her energy. The Fraxidus has sealed her in that chamber using something known as a flare crest. A flare crest is a type of seal which requires multiple points of to unlock it. Multiple puzzles which you have to solve in order to unlock it, basically. While trying to solve the puzzle behind the flare crest, we come across some interesting information regarding Jinshi's past. When Jinshi was an infant, her parents and her whole village was slaughtered by a horde of tacit discords. For some reason, Jinshi's cries as a baby resonated really deeply with the sentinel and it ended up summoning the sentinel to that location. The sentinel ended up wiping out the hordes in order to save the infant but she was too late. Jinshi, has, Jinshi had already passed away. The sentinel did not give up. The sentinel took the deceased baby upon top of Mount Firmament and used her powers invoking the temporal mandate to rewind time on the baby, thereby bringing Jinshi back to life. And that's where Jinshi was appointed as Jue's resonator because Jinshi had a portion of the temporal mandate within her, an ability to control the flow of time, which was what Jue's whole power was. After freeing Jue, she gives us a little bit of background information on what's been going on. Apparently, the Sentinel has been injured for a long time and as a result, she lost a portion of her powers. 
She's been using the Moonglong Chamber to recover her strength whenever she was feeling down. But because of the actions of the Fraxinus, Sentinel and Jue's injuries are way more severe than before. The Moonglong Chamber cannot sustain her anymore. So she is convinced that she will pass away soon enough. And what happens when a CD Sentinel passes away? The CD will perish as well. So Jua has a grand idea of using the remaining life force which she has to freeze the city in its place. The whole of Jinzhou will be frozen in time just like how Mount Firmament was and that way it will preserve the city and at some point someone will figure out how to unfreeze it. But Jinxi does not like that idea and she argues with Jue for a while trying to find out an alternate solution. Jinxi says that that is not a future which is safe for the city and the fact that you have to wait decades and centuries to rely on somebody figuring out something for a small city in the corner of nowhere is highly improbable and most people would just forget about them at that point. So Jinxi's suggestion is based on whatever we found from the Court of Savan studies in the previous topic which I mentioned. She wants to forcefully try to push into an overclock state and absorb some of the similar frequency from Jue since both of them share the same resonance abilities and try to induce or force a second awakening thereby restore the things that's happening in Mount Everest Mount Everest? Wait, what? I meant Mount Firmament. I don't know why I said Mount Everest. But thereby restoring everything that's happening in Mount Firmament and returning everything back to normal. Jue was very angry and very against that idea because she was concerned about the safety of Jin Shi. Like I mentioned before, it's a very thin line between overclocking and second awakening. And the fact that you had to time it very pre precisely meant that there's a high chance for Jin Shi to die in the process. But when we offered our help, Jue understood and Jue said that the whole purpose of the rover being here is to specify the right moment. There is a big key when she mentions this. She mentions that you, I, we have to decide the right moment to infuse the frequency from Jue into Jinshi. And if we are wrong, then Jinshi will die. And the whole thing depends on us. We are finally able to convince Jue to let us go with our plan instead of hers and we head on to the top of Mount Firmament to have the epic clash between Jinshi and Jue and Rover deciding when the right moment is. After the heavy clash between Sword and Dragon, we are finally able to determine the exact time when the transfer is supposed to take place. With that, we come to the final topic of this video, Lady Arbiter. 
this is by far the most important topic in this story well up to the story until now it gives us a lot of information of who we are what's been going on and leaves us with a very 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 bad cliffhanger well by bad i mean i'm pissed because the cliffhanger is so fucking strong i just want to know what's happening next but yes jue refers to us as lady arbiter the word arbiter means someone who can resolve disputes or somebody who has the absolute authority over something now after everything is resolved jue is willing to answer all of our questions and some of these questions include which are options which we can select are questions regarding our past questions about the choice and the access questions regarding jinshi's current condition and questions regarding the current situation in hongzhen jue reveals to us that the reason behind her calling as lady arbiter is because we are jue's arbiter we have the ultimate authority over jue because we are her arbiter and her former master we are the one who created the sentinel and we are the one who stood by the sentinel while the jinjo city was constructed the whole city the whole region was formed because we wanted it to we are the one who decided all of it and the reason why we were referring to the access and the key is because we handed over the access of the sonorosphere to jue and we decided to watch the development of civilizations from the background she also told us that since we successfully transferred the temporal program onto jinshi she is safe and the city and hongjen mount firmament is also safe but the people of hongjen will still have to be content with the fact that if they do decide to leave the island they will have to live with the shortened lifespan but that is the best we can do at the time rather than endanger the life of everybody in the whole region. Jue goes on to say that she seems interested in our tacit mark. She is interested in Abby who resides in our tacit mark. She feels the same energy or similar energy that flows through her in Abby, but she does not recognize the type of being that it is. But she assures you that if Abby is residing within our body, it's probably because we gave her authority to do so. and the fact that jue lets us know that anything and everything that happens is or is happening is because we wanted or we gave permission to do so before we lost our memories jue also goes on to say that if we want to get more information regarding our lost memories the place where we need to go is the black shores the black shores is the starting point for our journey and we need to head to that island if we want to get more information Act seven ends with a small cut scene where we see Prolova. Prolova is the girl who was with Scar in the previous acts. She mentions that it doesn't matter that their plans have failed; they did get what they came for, and what they came for was information regarding the second awakening. Their whole plan was to use an artificial second awakening program to create resonators who are stronger than sentinels. They also gained a secondary benefit, and that was all the information that they received regarding Rover. The whole cut scene ends where she says that she can't make a certain somebody wait behind bars. Yes, Scar is being busted out of prison, and that's what we will see in the next one. Well, that's it for this episode of Story Time with Trends. I apologize for the long one, but I did try to condense it as much as possible. Hopefully, you guys found this enjoyable. With that being said, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Smash that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.